Singapore's Aquatic Animal Health Services is now open for business. It gives fish farmers access to veterinarians and professionals on how to keep fish diseases at bay. It's the country's latest bid to boost its aquaculture sector and keep fish farms viable for local food production. The Singapore Food Agency says the service also allows fish farmers to collect data on diseases and identify areas to improve their biosecurity. Eleven farms have already signed up. Now, the service comes as one of the country's largest sea bass producers, Barramundi Group, pa paused harvesting in Singapore's southern waters following a deadly viral outbreak. Well, the company is working around this by diversifying its supply and growing its operations in Brunei. And for more on this, we're joined by Professor William Chen. He's director of the NTU Food Science and Technology Program. Professor Chen, this... Well, in our brief chat before we went live, you were talking about many, many viruses and even viruses that affect fish farms. The one that affected Barramundi is just one of many different options. Uh, how difficult is it, given Singapore's push to increase its local seafood production and food security, bearing in mind there are these viruses and one has to try to preempt them as far as possible? Well, uh, viruses uh, are abundant in the environment, uh, not just uh, land-based, but e equally in the oceans. In fact, they are the most abundant entity in the ocean. And uh, they're, they're actually the primary, primary role is to recycle this uh, carbon and phosphate from within the ocean and the atmosphere. And, uh, but with this uh, global warming, what we are seeing is that the, the microbes in the oceans are getting also more active and attacking fish, for example. This is what we are seeing in the, uh, in the fish farm uh, operated by Barramundi. Uh, but uh, what we, we, we should also see is that the Barramundi fish farm is the only one that is uh, the, the deep sea, uh, offshore Singapore, and uh, the damage actually is quite limited. Uh, for example, you will know that uh, we import more than 130,000 tons of fish mm. every year. In fact, back in uh, 2020, and uh, locally we produce about 8% uh, of the uh, fish for Singapore consumption. Mm -hmm. So if you calculate this uh, number, we know that uh, 377 tons of fish uh, are produced by Barramundi Group to, for Singapore local market. So the percentage is such about 3%. Mm. And uh, Professor, I just want to pick up on the point where you're talking about, you know, climate change, global warming and, and, and El Nino and how that is also linked to um, an increase in all these sort of uh, viruses and infectious diseases, um, you know, in our fish population. Um, I, I, do we then expect no, more new variants to uh, perhaps surface uh, over time? I think uh, um, the understanding of the viruses in the ocean uh, is far more limited compared to what we know about viruses uh, on land because we have this COVID-19 flu virus, so we, we, we know far better these uh, land-based viruses. And, uh, but uh, we do know that with global warming, the microbes are getting uh, more active. There are some bacteria actually that cause more damage uh, with these uh, global warming conditions. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the different terrains, one uh, carries out, I suppose, food production. Uh, let's take a look at where our open sea farms are in Singapore. We take a look at that map. That they're either in coastal waters off the east and west Jowal Straits, in the north or the southern waters, where the only farm operating there is, as we've all been talking about, the Barramundi Group. Of course, there are also some farms that are on land. If you include those, Singapore has about 110 fish farms. How will these locations, is it a matter of location uh, that keeps a farm more or less exposed to things like viruses or even algae blooms? Well, if you look at the, those farms located uh, near the Johor Street, uh, they are more uh, prone to uh, you know, pollution-induced algae bloom, for example. Whereas in the uh, southern part, southern waters, what we see, like for example, Paramonti groups, that is really exposed to nature. And sometimes you, you, we, uh, these uh, uh, fish farms may be also close to shipping lines. All these are also uh, made, made the fish exposed to uh, you know, pollution that comes with uh, uh, ships. Yeah. 
Now, um, in terms of diversifying, you know, um, the types of fish species within farms, I'm wondering how feasible is that? Or even say, you know, a selective uh, breeding program where we can produce fish that's resistant uh, to all these viruses? Well, that's, I, I, I understand this is a part of the effort under Singapore Food uh, Story. So that is to uh, using genetic tools to improve the performance of these uh, fish in terms of uh, getting more resilient uh, towards these uh, environmental conditions. Not all viruses at this point, and I'm not just thinking of fish, I'm thinking of, say, for example, bird flu. You cannot even vaccinate a chicken against bird flu. And if a chicken farm gets bird flu, you cull all of them. Uh, but assuming one does have a vaccine for a common enough disease, such as uh, this drop scale mm. virus that, that was a big problem for Barramundi Group, uh, would there be safety concerns for fish getting vaccines? If people were to eat the fish, how long does the vaccine stay in the body? Does it actually affect human health? Well, uh, when we talk about uh, in, enhancing uh, um, fish health conditions, uh, one is vaccination. And uh, I, I understand that there are already vaccines available uh, against a uh, number of uh, uh, fish diseases, but vaccin vaccination can only go that far. We also need to uh, you know, improve the, the health well-being of the fish, for example, give them better feed and also enhance, for example, their gut microbiome. That's a, another area that people are looking into. So uh, working on the fish feed to improve the health so that they are, they are more resilient towards uh, environmental conditions. Well, thanks so much for coming in this evening and joining us on Singapore Tonight, Professor William Chen, Director of the NTU Food Science and Technology Programme.